Congratulations on Gun in the Hotel Bible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, you for, for watching it. I really appreciate it. Uh, you, you took the time and, uh, and agreed to talk to us here. Excellent. I guess, I guess the very first question, which is an easy question that everyone likes to know, is this, this movie is entirely different from you know, a lot of the stuff you've done before. Why did you two want to do something like this? Well, uh, for me, like my entire career has been in, in family comedies and um, with lots of CG and like critters running around and bells and whistles and stuff. And so the opportunity to just completely strip down to nothing, two characters in a room, um, it's all about the words, it's all about the acting was was just, you know, an irresistible opportunity for me. And I was just really super grateful that Brad and Daniel and Alicia uh, agreed to, to let me on for the ride. What about for you, Alicia? Why did you want to do the, this film? Well, um, Daniel and Bradley came to me with the script um, before. It, it was originally a play called Gun in a Motel Bible. Um, and I, uh, they, they came to me with the script, uh, wanting notes and I fell in love with the material right away, um, and related very strongly to both characters and wanted to see them, um, wanted to see them come alive. And, and I just, I really wanted to protect those characters. So I, uh, I asked them if, uh, Hey, could I direct this? And, and they were they were happy to have me. Um, they're great guys. <laughs> did did both of you work together before, or this is your first project? I mean, how how did this came to fruition for both of you then? Um, this is our first project together. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Daniel and Bradley, the the writers and stars, know Alicia from from that world, um, from the stage world, and things they'd done together. Um, so no, Alicia and I have never worked together before. Um, and I get the benefit of all her um, wonderful staging and all the great acting that, that she coached the guys to. And um, so I sort of jumped on when it was time to uh, to roll a camera, really. And so I, kind of, I feel like I got all the fun part. I got to, uh, you know, design the design how the camera moves around the room and, and captures this, uh, this wonderful sort of self-contained play. Um, so that was our, that's our first, it's our first collaboration. Wow. Because this is based off a play, how did you want to carefully approach this? Did you want to basically make it feel like a play or did you actually want to make it feel like more like a movie? Um, well, we had to, sorry, <laughs> we, we had to make it feel more like a movie in, in some ways because, I mean, the kiss of death in, I think, theater is sitting and talking. Um, and that was one of the biggest challenges for me, um, blocking wise in the in the play was making that uh, more dynamic and engaging because it's just two guys talking in a room. Um, but that is even uh, more of a kiss of death in cinema because it's just not inherently cinematic. So um, I think Raj has some fantastic uh approaches with with the camera and with how he played with the point of view um and uh, it turned out absolutely wonderful I, I couldn't be more pleased raj did you feel like you had to pull back because you have been on you know bigger projects before and this is much more you know indie style that's exactly what i wanted to do i mean uh you know I don't get an opportunity to do these, you know, Aaron Sorkin isn't sending me screenplays, if you know what I mean. So the opportunity to do this was uh, was a blessing really. Um, so um, yes, I had to pull back, but also I was dying to pull back really. So like I said, to just strip it down to to just the acting and, and, the, and the writing. And um, it was really, it was really elating. It was so fun to, to, to just sort of, you know, make this movie and, and, and design the shots around all the great stuff that, that Alicia had working. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of the most fun I've ever had on set, really, I have to say, because it was just, uh, it was just so, so contained and so right there. And, and I guess my goal was to, 
in, in staging it all was to sort of go with the flow of, of what Alicia had already created. So it's kind of like a, a prize fight in a way and that, you know, the two characters are sort of at their different corners and they're assessing each other out. And then, you know, they come in, they kind of mix it up a little bit and retreat to their corners a bit. And, and so having the, um, the visuals work around that and sort of mirror that um, was uh, was sort of you know the thinking going in. So I, I worked with Alicia. We we actually recreated the the set in my living room, and uh, the guys came in and they started doing their thing. And I had my little my little video phone, you know, going around uh, planning the shots and everything. And um, it was just it was it was great. It was great fun and just uh, just a real honor to be involved in in something that um, that speaks to people in, in a way that my other films never have. Well, let's let's back up here. Raj, did you say this was filmed in your living room? Because I actually thought it was a it was a it was a stage somewhere. <laughs> I should I should correct. We uh, we did a rehearsal in my living room where we planned out the things and then uh, no then we did get a, a small set. We shot for four days on a on a little stage in Canoga Park. And then did one day, one day of exteriors in, in downtown LA. Oh, absolutely! Because 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 that you basically uh, shot this on on a stage. Did did this production make it? It was it easier to shoot because it's you know it's small and tight, or was it more challenging because of trying to figure out the logistics, trying to make it look bigger? The answer is both. Uh, it, it was easier in that we didn't have like trucks and we got to get across town to get this, you know, this um, magic hour shot and, and, you know, things like that. We didn't, we, we had a very small crew. And so it was easier from a logistics standpoint because we knew we were going to check in and, and shoot the next 15 pages uh, the next day kind of a thing. Um, I guess it was harder in that like none of my old tricks, you know, were, were going to work. And so it was really about, um, as I said, just, just designing as, as fluid and elegant uh, of a visual pattern and design around just capturing what, what Alicia had done. Um, and just honestly trying to have the audience not be aware of the camera, just have the, the camera be a, a, a fly in the room kind of a thing and, and not get in the way. So, um, so yeah, I tried to design it with, the, you know, sort of as many areas as I could with as few cuts as possible. There's some takes that are, you know, five minutes with no cut and things like that. And so um, that's not ever something I've, I've had to do in the other movies I've done. And so it was a real pleasure um, and a bit of a challenge, but a real pleasure to do. Alicia, you worked with those guys before. How much coaching mm -hmm. did you really have to coach them? Because it, 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 it is their play, right? Yeah, it is. And um, they they worked really hard and, and for, for a good long time on it and poured a, a, an immense amount of passion into the material. Um, but the, the great thing about those two is they have a strong trust for each other. Um, and they gave me quite a bit of trust um, and respect when they brought me on board. Um, it's not easy. I, I am a writer as well, and it's not easy handing your your baby over uh, to someone, but I'm really grateful that they trusted me with that. And um, yeah, they were, Daniel described it this way. It was <laughs> at times like um, coaching two playful Great Danes. <laughs> They, were, they are just delightful um, to be around, these, these two guys. Um, they're, they're just a lot of fun, but they also have a, a tremendous amount of respect for their craft. Um, and it was, it was actually pretty easy all said and done because they, um, because that, um, atmosphere of trust was there that we could experiment and play with things. Um, we didn't have to, you know, go home carrying these big emotional burdens. It was, um, it was just a beautiful creative environment. What notes do you give to a stage actor to be a film actor? Because I, I guess Raj mentioned before, like, don't stare at the cameras, right? <laughs> oh, they. <laughs> 
you know, it was, fan- it was absolutely fantastic for me because having the camera there and having the, um, the different, um, the different way of viewing the material gave me a lot more to play with in terms of their performance. Um, so a lot of it was like, okay, now they can, now the audience can catch a little more of the nuances and the subtleties in what you guys do. So I would just encourage more relaxing and just um, more uh, just kind of taking their time with uh, playing off of each other. They, but they adapt very, very quickly. Um, they're just pros at this. Yeah, they, they both have uh, they both have time in front of the camera, so it, it wasn't like a brand new thing for them. They knew about uh, finding the marks and and doing all that stuff and. And again, sort of our job with the camera was to let it play. We have some takes in there, as I said, that, that run, you know, eight minutes, you know, nine minutes or whatever. And so um, so designing it such a way that they could they could be them and be in that space and and, um, and just as much as possible be unaware that the camera was there and, and just these two guys, you know, having this, this these conversations um, was the goal. And, and they, they, they stepped right in and stepped right up and like they've been doing it their whole lives. And uh, so they're, they're, they're real professionals. I'm, I'm curious because uh, there's so many themes of morality and religion in this film. Do you guys get into those debates on set yourselves? Um, on set, I say, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's more in Danley, Dan, Daniel and Bradley's uh, in, in creating the piece. Um, I think that they, and by the way, I think that they each wrote uh, the same amount of Gid as they wrote of Pete. I think they both wrote both characters. I, 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 it's tempting to think of, you know, Bradley just writing Pete and Gid just writing, you know, Dan just writing Gid. But I think they they, they both wrote for both characters. Um, uh, so in terms of like all those discussions about morality and everything, I'm sure there was hard discussions. And I think that the idea of the play came out of some of the discussions that they were having. Um, but the, their goal was to make it as even-handed as possible. No straw men, you know. Um, it's, it's just a drama about this character confronting his faith. And it could be, could have been another faith, could have been, you know, another character. But in this moment, it's Pete, who's in a very, very dark place, who grew up in a Christian household, who for all these various reasons has, um, has turned his back on, on you know, his belief system, having to confront the Bible, his belief, his old belief system. And, and so it's just a very dramatic setup that, uh, that leads to, um, to some, you know, wonderful exchanges. And, and as I said, the, the idea was no straw man, um, just for it to be just a hard conversation about faith where um, it's as equal, even handed as possible. Excellent. And um, Raj, does this, ins- this movie inspire you to hopefully direct a play someday? And Alicia, does this inspire you to direct like a, like a big uh, film like Raj has done in the past? <laughs> hey man, I would, I would love to do uh, projects like this for the rest of my career. I just think that there's, there's so much, um, you know, there's so much good writing and so much good performing that, that sort of doesn't make it uh, into movies and on the TV because because the idea is too small. It's not cinematic. It's, you know, it's, it's a bit avant-garde or whatever. So um, I, I would honestly love to do a series, you know, like a best of fringe sort of a series or something. Um, I, I would be all over that. Um, and just in terms of directing a play, if anyone ever asks me, I'm available. I would love to. <laughs> and Alicia. Oh, I, you know, I've, I've actually got a, a another um film project in development right now um but as far as a big uh big studio type of uh, movie like raj yeah why not <laughs> um i think that'd be i think that'd be a lot of fun a lot of uh, a a much different speed for me um but uh yeah sure bring it I'm I'm sure Raj could share plenty of stories or nightmares <laughs> about doing a, larger projects. That's that's for sure. Oh, I I would I would I would 
Pepper him with questions before. <laughs> We've all got war stories and battle scars. Uh -huh. All part of the fun. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let, let me leave with one more thought because, uh, because we are talking, you know, via distance and so on because we live in crazy times. How are you two staying, you know, creative and sane during these times? I'll let, I'll let you go first, Raj. Okay. Um, um, to be honest, uh, my life during COVID doesn't look a tremendous amount different from my life pre-COVID, which is, I think is kind of sad a little bit as it, as it comes out of my mouth. But, uh, but yeah, no, I've, I've always been sort of a homebody, um, been developing things. So that's basically me at home um, on the computer and I'm shooting emails back and forth. Zoom is a lovely new thing. We're, we're very happy to, uh, to have such an easy way to communicate. Um, uh, but yeah, so, so, you know, my life hasn't, my day-to-day -day life hasn't changed a lot. Obviously it'd be great to get a movie going and that's harder with all of the, the pandemic stuff, but it's starting to happen. Protocols are in place. And, um, so it seems like, yeah, it seems like, uh, it seems like it, it you know, it, if it starts, if it happens, then uh, I'll be very happy to be back on a movie set. What about for you, Alicia? Um, yeah, uh, COVID has been such a, it's, this has been such a uh, weird experience. Um, and for myself, I've kind of been, uh, surrounded by death a bit in the past few months, just, um, with, uh, I, I work, um, from my living room, um, on a, I'm a, uh, secretary for a TV show. Um, and so many people have had losses this year. Um, so as far as creativity and sanity goes in that type of environment, um, my creativity tends to go from questions. And I think this is a season of questions. So um, I just keep asking them and uh, exploring what the answers are. Um, but yeah, this, and, and I guess the sanity comes from having faith that there are answers and uh, that there is a, a bigger story out there um, that you can have confidence in that. Excellent. And uh, one last thing. I mean, you don't have to answer the question if you don't want to, but what, what ending did you hope that uh, this film was going to have? Because it kind of left... It very open for the audiences to interpret it that way. But what what would have been your perfect ending? Um, I am not going to take that bait, sir. Uh, uh, the we made a very very specific uh, creative decision that it's the audiences. It's the eyes left to the audience to to decide what happens in in those crucial final moments. Um, and the fact that Gid, our little Gid character, does not know what happened. And yet he soldiers on and he, he pulls himself together and the next person that walks through the door and he's, he's up back to being himself, you know, re ready, to, ready to serve. So um, I think that's by design. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we get this question a lot, obviously, <laughs> um, and everyone has their own theories and everyone pitches their theories. And, and I nod sagely and say that uh, I'm glad that that's what you took away. And, um, but it's it's really I think it's it's more interesting and, and more of a conversation starter um, for people to to come to their own conclusions really. And obviously Alicia's nodding her head because she's yes I is going to be mum on this. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Um, if from from the time that uh, that they presented the script to me. Um, few years back, uh, that was the ending of the, the piece. The little tag with Gid is new for the film, but um, at the, uh, the uh, play version ends just the scene before that. Um, but it was, um, it, it's a very strong ending, I think, and um, it is exactly the ending that it needs. Um, yeah.
What we found Can after every, it? whether it was the play or every screening is that, um, you know, people would be clustered on the sidewalk or outside the mm -hmm. theater and no one's talking about where to go to dinner or, or whatever. It's like, you know, when Pete said that, what did you think? And, and you know, your, to your question, what happened at the end? I don't know. What do you think? What happened? So <laughs> one, of the, one of our great wishes for this movie is that it's a conversation starter, um, that, it, that through Pete's character, that audiences are suddenly allowed to ask someone they've known maybe 20 years a question that may have been a little bit weird, a little bit taboo, a little bit, you know, uh, uh, when would that ever come up by the water cooler? But here you have these characters talking about this and it, and it actually happens. Like after the screening, people are asking each other questions about scripture and, and about uh, morality and, and things that people just, you can't normally bring up. Um, so this this film as a as, as a vessel to to uh, you know greenlight people to do that I think is one of its great strengths and, and I really hope that that uh, I really do hope that that continues. I do agree. It is a great conversation starter, and it actually make people who watch this will probably definitely talk about it. But thank you for not answering that question. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Gabe, what do you think? What do you think happened when the uh, when the gun when the, at the very end? What would I think? Yeah, I was trying not to give it away, but what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I probably he probably shot the ceiling and ran away. For all I know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> then that's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. as, as as far as I'm concerned, you know, there there's a hundred different possibilities that could that could have happened, and. It could have been just a car backfire outside the hotel for all we know. <laughs> that's true. Well, then that's as good an answer as any, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, congratulations to the both of you uh, for this film. It, it is a terrific, uh, ni nice film, and I think uh, people will actually talk about it after they view it. So well, hopefully we get to do this again. I appreciate, I appreciate you giving us a platform to talk about it and, uh, and for the nice things you said about the film. And thank you for what you do. Hey, thank you. Next time. Bye now. Bye. Thanks.